Hamiltonian Cup, emblem of victory and Trotting's famed classic, the Hamiltonian. The big field includes number one, Butch Hanover, and his stablemate, Scott Frost, 1A. 13,000 around at Goshen's Good Time Track as the field of fast-stepping three-year-olds gets away behind the pace car. This is the second heat. This is for keeps. Scott Frost, son of a previous Hamiltonian winner, ran away with the first heat in fast time. And now the Bay Colt, driven by a Canadian rangeman, Joe O'Brien, is in sharp focus as he makes his bid to wrap it up for keeps. Watch him overtake and pass the pace setter, Childs Hanover. Scott Frost on the inside heads for the finish line with Gallophone in second place, and that's where he stays. There's no denying the flashy Colt from California, Scott Frost. Scott Frost and the veteran Joe O'Brien. And Joe O'Brien was the guy that everybody used to get to time trial horses. <laughs> and Joe O'Brien always looked old. Wasn't he? He was even old when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, if you wanted to time, oh, your horse time trial, who'd you, who'd you get to go down to Kentucky? Always I got Joe O'Brien. <laughs> it was always Joe O'Brien, right? As a matter of fact, on this date in 1942, Joe O'Brien, the same Joe O'Brien, won 11 races, which tied a world record for the most wins on a single day at one racetrack, and he did it at Tuo Raceway. Oh, okay, yeah. T R U R O Tuo. It's Tuo in Nova Scotia. Exactly, <laughs> the place that's famous for making that locks. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you're saying all these things about Joe O'Brien. I just want to say one thing about the horse Scott Frost. I mean, he yes. was the one pulling Joe O'Brien. You know, he lived to be 31 years, 31 years old. Really? Yeah, that's pretty old, right, for a horse 31 he years old. He probably had the body of a 30-year-old too, right? <laughs> he probably think he did okay. because he was living in California. Oh, that good California yeah. laid-back life. Okay, let's go to <laughs> Harris Tenth and more action with that. Here's Heather. We've got um, yeah the open handicap forty thousand dollar purse Pallone Ranger one of the millionaires in here and he's also the favorite. Western Ace, he won this event last week and Philos Hanover has raced 30 times this year, only missed a check for his owners six times out of those 30 times. So he should be like ATM Hanover. Let's watch. <laughs> It's Western Ace by a length and a half from Philos Hanover, and Pallone Ranger is stalling from first over. Three quarters in 122 and four. They're midway around the far turn, and Callahan is going to work on Western Ace. Pallone Ranger is re rallying on the outside. Philos Hanover waits for the open stretch. They cut the corner, and it's Western Ace by a length and a half. Philos Hanover with pace. My Pan Mar up the inside. Pallone Ranger is driving. Casimir Cam Ocean, but they're all chasing Western Ace. Western Ace leaves out of the six hole, but then really couldn't find a spot on the pylon, so he decides. I'm going to see what's happening up front there. He gets the lead, was parked to the first quarter in 26 and 2, did get a little breather, wins the race in 149 and 4. This was actually the very first time that Corey Callahan has ever driven Western Ace. Wow. And it was very memorable for Corey. He's going to tell us about it. That was the first time I'd won in 49. Um, the fastest before that, I think I'd won three or four times in 50 and 4. So when I saw it flash up, it was kind of like. Wow, all right, I just shattered my record by a whole second, which is quite a lot in racing, that's for sure. So your first sub-150 mile, did it seem a lot faster? Did it seem a lot different? Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit. I mean, he's he's a very quick horse. Uh, you know, when I called on him in the, you know, I saw the 122 and 4, just kind of asked him for a little bit more there at the head of the stretch. And, you know, he sprinted off. I mean, I knew we were going a pretty good clip. And, uh, you know, 27 flat is, is you know, quite fast out here. So so he won last week at 10 to 1 and with, with Sears. And he won with you at 6 to 1. So somebody following Western Ace of the Windows could have made some serious drama, right? Yeah, they did pretty good. There was actually, uh, I was at the sale at Harrington yesterday, and somebody came up to me. They came up to me, and they said, uh, "You know, I just wanted to tell you that you bought this horse for me." And I was like, "What do you mean I bought this horse for you?" Because I had a fifty-dollar exact of Western Ace and Philos Hanover the other day. So he, oh, that's great. He cashed out pretty good. I mean, it's you know, it's it's okay for the for the betters. I mean, they saw you know a driver change from Brian Sears, who's the top guy in the country right now. Um, you know, to me, so there was a. You know, you definitely got some value there. So we're going to have a look now at Sonny the Paddock Judge. This is a great segment because Sonny tells you all about the inside stuff that you'd never be privy to unless you were watching this show. He's going to show you about the draw and how horses wind up in what post position right now. Here's Sonny. Thanks, guys. It takes a lot to put on a show here at Harris Chester. We're going to take a look at some behind-the-scenes works on how we do the draw. 
we start out early in the morning with phone calls. Up to 200 entries are entered and there's 200,000 in purses being offered at any given day. Let's uh, introduce our racing staff. We have Rick Kane, our racing secretary, Don Harmon, the associate judge, Tom Salerno, associate judge, who are responsible for putting together the draw. We're going to show you a little example of the actual draw and how it's done. And this is Fonda Cipatella from the Racing Commission. We're going to take a look on how the post positions are drawn. Race one is going to be a now as a 6500 pace, and there's eight starters, two also eligibles. Okay. At that time, I'll take a look at the horses, make sure everything is in order here, and we'll shuffle them up, put them into the box here, and uh, I'll call off these next two are also eligible. And also eligible means if one of these horses scratch by scratch time, which would be tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the also eligibles will draw into there. So now we're ready to start drawing the eight in the race for post positions. And Fonda will shake up the pills and pull out the numbers. She'll call out the numbers and I'll pull the horse's name out of this box. Three. Number three is JK Better Be Good. Seven. Number seven is Arts Blaze. Two. Captain Timmy is two. This is just a small portion and how it's done here early in the morning of the many things that we do. Thanks guys. I'm Sonny the Paddock Judge and I approve this message. Back to you. You didn't know Sonny the Paddock Judge was an artiste, did you? The draw. Mm -hmm. Get it, the draw. Oh. Come on, babe. Don't make me explain yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when we come back, we will go around the oval and we got a goodie for you. It's the one million dollar final of the Canadian Trotting Classic. And once again, Dewey Cheatham and Howe, who was vanquished last week by his arch nemesis, crazed. Those two hook it up again for a million bucks in the line when we come back. Time for Around the Oval. And do we have a goodie for you today? The $1 million Canadian trotting class that took place at Mohawk, where they give out money like, well, like it's good and plenty. <laughs> You can't say water anymore because water is expensive. <laughs> it's a different day and age. But anyway, the two arch rivals, Dewey Cheatham and Howe, started from the 10 hole. Not good. No. Craze from the three, and they were almost even in the betting. Dewey Cheatham and Howe went up the slight favorite. A million bucks in the line. Could he vanquish? Would you tell? Can we watch the race? Would you tell you wins? I'm going crazy Let's here. Watch the race. <laughs> Dewey Cheatham and Howe cut a quarter in 27 and 3. Schnicker expecting company and here comes Tim Tietrick rushing up on the outside with Crazed. And Crazed is up to take charge at 3 8 Dewey Cheatham and Howe will sit the pocket spot from here, then back in third, Celebrity Secret. And right there with them, fourth is Clerk Magistrate. To the inside, fifth, Nell McCarran riding six, tipped out from the backfield, starts up Velocity Hall, going to catch his cover is Napoleon. And the back three in the field, we have Nuria followed further back by Atomic Hall. B strike three, two more likes back is the trailer 56 and 2 for the half and they sweep into that far turn crazed and t-trick the ball in their court they lead it by just over a length with three eights to go dewey cheatham and howe is right there second and looking racy in the pocket spot underway third to the outside now comes clerk magistrate bottled up towards the inside from in fourth his celebrity secret they're on their way to three quarters and crazed is the one they'll have to chase down dewey cheatham and howe is on his helmets first over clerk magistrate three quarters 125 and 1 28 and 4 third quarter speed they're in of the stretch. Craze leads the way. Dewey Cheatham and Howe trying to muscle his way out of the pocket spot with Trot for Schnitger. Clerk Magistrate on the grandstand side. Three of them across the racetrack. Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Dewey Cheatham and Howe in the center of the racetrack. Still there. Dewey Cheatham and Howe with a 16th of a mile to go and Dewey bounces back. Dewey did it. Got the money and looked good doing it too. He beats Craze who finished third and it was an incredible mile. There was three of them across the track like a mid stretch and it looked like it was going to be a head bob finish. And all of a sudden, Dewey accelerated like a monster. And he wound up winning the race by like a length and a half. And he was just really, really strong for Ray Schnicker. Ah, yeah, that shows a game horse right there, you know? Yeah. When it comes down to the wire, they know. That's going to do it for us. We're out of time. For Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross. Reminding you, we're on 4 o'clock on Comcast Sportsnet. We come on after either college football or Flyers hockey. But stay with us and find out what's going on previously and what's ahead in the great sport of harness racing. Have a great day. Bye-bye.